Okay, let's try a little more complicated momentum problem. We've got a solid block sitting here and a jet of water hitting the block and turning through an angle of 60 degrees. So it comes in horizontally, goes out at 60 degrees from the horizontal. So we know just from examination and our experience that this is going to require a force in this direction to hold the block still and another force in this direction to hold the block still. So if the block's going to remain stationary, we can do a momentum balance and find out the forces involved by the acceleration of the fluid because nothing else is going on. So we'll neglect gravity, meaning this is either on a horizontal surface or the velocities are so large compared to the heights involved that, that gravity doesn't have an effect. And we need to know something about the flow. So we're told that the fluid's coming in here at 10 meters per second and at one, one kilogram per second? No, we don't know what the mass flow is. We do, however, know that we've got H1 here. That's the thickness of the sheet as it comes in here. And we'll assume that it's two-dimensional, so it extends off some distance W in this direction. So there's a width. <clears throat> Pressure is atmospheric everywhere, so zero gauge makes it easiest for us. Zero gauge everywhere except along this surface, which will keep inside the control volume, so we don't have to worry about it. So no net pressure forces. Now we need to have a control volume to account for the fluid coming in, the fluid going out, and tracking the momentum that's actually passing across the boundaries. Now I'm going to draw the control volume fairly carefully here. I'm going to draw a little dotted line around the block so that all of the forces that are acting on the block have to be there. I'm going to draw the dotted line across the jet there just as it's entering the flow. And this dotted line I need to draw it in a direction that's going to make my life easiest. So I'm going to draw it perpendicular across the outbound jet and then I'll just join these two together it doesn't really matter which direction so by drawing this line perpendicular across here then the perpendicular velocity is just the velocity that the jets leaving with that's going to make it a lot easier for me to calculate my uh, volume flow and hence my mass flow I'll call this location 1, where stuff is coming in, and up here, location 2, where stuff is going out. Now, what do I know? I know that it's a steady flow, so no storage, no changes inside the control volume. I know then that m dot 1, the mass flow in at 1, is equal to m dot 2, the mass flow out at 2. Likewise, Bernoulli's equation applies. And from Bernoulli's equation, the pressures are all atmospheric, so there's no pressure term. We're neglecting gravity, so there's no elevation term. We wind up with the velocity at 1 and the velocity at 2 being the same. So V1, capital V, 1, equals capital V2. I'm making an emphasis on the capital because that's the total velocity, not the lowercase v that we use for a y velocity component. So those are both 10 meters per second. If m dot 1 is equal to m dot 2 and the velocities are the same and the densities are the same, then the cross-sectional areas must be the same Therefore, H1 also equals H2. Now, if we go to try to find out what the forces are, we're going to need to balance the forces in the x-direction. I'll do that first. Some of the forces acting in the x-direction will be equal to 
M.2 U2 that's the mass flow and the U component of velocity the velocity in the X direction at the outlet minus M.1 U1 <clears throat> the mass flow at 1 times the X velocity component at 1 so we need to know what these values are U1 is equal to capital V1 is equal to 10 meters per second U2 it's now 10 meters per second up that way but the X component is going to be smaller than that 10 meters per second it's going to be 10 times the cosine of 60 cosine of 60 degrees or 5 meters per second V1 0 no vertical velocity here there's the y direction there's the positive x direction and v2 equal to 10 times the sine of 60 degrees or 8.67 meters per second so m.2 need to be careful that we use the right value here I'd be tempted to use uh, u2 times a2 but that would give me the wrong answer because the velocity that determines the, determines the mass flow across this area is the perpendicular velocity that's either u2 squared plus v2 squared all square root to get the magnitude or looking at this I know it's 10 meters per second so v2 the total velocity times a2 the area times the density times u2 minus rho v1 a1 times u1 or observing that v2a2 and v1a1 are both the same it'll be density times u1 times a1 times u2 minus u1 u1 is 10 u2 is 10 co 60 minus u1 we wind up with negative 50 times rho 1 a1 so the sum of the forces acting in the x direction negative 50 times the density times the area so that'll give us mass flow related information and that's a negative x force similarly we can figure out what's going on for the sum of the forces in the y direction it'll be m dot times v2 minus v1 the m dot is the same in both cases we make sure it's the same in both cases by checking on it and we wind up with rho 1 u1 a1 times v2 minus v1 V1 is 0, V2 is 8.67, and this turns out to be 86.7 times rho 1 A1 will give us the force in the y direction. So it's positive, it's acting that way. This one was negative, it's acting that way.